Hi, good Tuesday morning. Today is December 22, and which means it's also the 22nd day of Advent of Code. Uh, glad to have you here. Um, 22nd already, wow, the time has really flew by. And we've reached the final week of Advent of Code, and also four more days to go. We've collected uh, 41 stars, should be 42. I still haven't done part two of day 20. I'll do that later. And uh, the map is looking pretty good. Our journey started in the North Pole. We went down a mountain. We flew to an island, flew to another island, took a ferry. Then we had to take a detour to another island. And then uh, another ferry. Oh no, this was a flight. And uh, then we hopped on a high speed train through uh, a dense forest. And uh, yesterday we built our own raft. Uh, and then we had to, um, the puzzle was uh, solving a, uh, a list of ingredients with allergies. So we have our food uh, items on board as well to survive a journey of a few days that is probably going to lead us finally to our destination over here. It looks like something is going to reveal here, an island, uh, and that's I think our, where our holiday is taking place. So today's uh, puzzle looks like we're going to be on a... Um, yeah, on the water, on our own uh, build raft, and uh, I wonder what that's going to be like. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, start with today's puzzle. If you're uh, watching or if you're tuning in later, um, if you're tuning in later, you cannot really know. But if you're watching, let me know, uh, let me know in the chat what you're doing, what are you up to, how your day is going. Have you solved today's puzzle yet, or you will do it later? Uh, yeah. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into it. Day 22. Uh, also, let me know if the music's too loud or too soft. Uh, I can adjust the volume. Crab combat. Ooh, that's interesting. I have to fight crabs. It only takes a few hours of sailing the ocean on a raft for boredom to sink in. <laughs> that's true. Uh, fortunately, you brought a small deck of space cards. Space cards. Uh, okay, so this links to Advent of Code Day 22 from last year. Interesting, I haven't done it. Uh, you'd like to play a game of combat, uh, and there's even an opponent available. A small crab <laughs> that climbed your board, your raft, before you left. Cute. Fortunately, it doesn't take long to reach uh, to teach the crab the rules. Okay. Before the game starts, split the cards so each player has their own deck. And that's going to be the puzzle input for today. Then, the game consists of a series of rounds. Both players draw their top card, and the player with the higher valued card wins the round. Kind of like blackjack. The winner keeps both cards, placing them on the bottom of, of their own deck so that the winner's card is above the other card. If this causes the player to have all of the cards, they win, and the game ends. For example, consider following starting decks. Player 1 starts with these cards and player 2 starts with these cards. This arrangement means that player 1's deck contains 5 cards with 9 on top and 1 on the bottom. Player 2's uh, deck also contains 5 cards with 5 on top and 10 at the bottom. The first round begins with both players drawing the top card of their decks, 9 and 5. Player 1 has the higher card, so both cards move to the bottom of player 1's deck such that 9 is above 5. That makes sense. In total, it takes 29 rounds before a player has all of the cards. So we go through all the rounds, 29. So players 1's deck has 1, and then uh, players 2 has all these cards, 7 is higher than 1. So player 2 wins because players one, uh, player 1 has no cards left. And this is the final deck of uh, the second player's deck of the winners. Once the game ends, you can calculate the winner, winning player's score which is um, the bottom card in their deck is worth the value of the card multiplied by one. The second card from the bottom card is worth the value of the card multiplied by two and so on. With 10 cards, the top card is worth the value on the card multiplied by 10. In this example, the winning player score is, all right, that's gonna be fairly straightforward to calculate at the end. Uh, so we are doing here three times 10 plus two times nine and so on, 306. So once the game ends, the winning player score is 306. Play the small crab in a game of combat using the two decks you just dealt. What is the winning player score? Alright, today's fun. Today's fun. Let's look at our deck. That's not that large. 
uh, our input. Uh, let's save our input in our working directory, and uh, which is here. All right, and um, let's have a look at it. I'm gonna open this on the side. Make this a little bit smaller, right here. Okay, uh, perhaps you could use our example input as well. Yeah, I'll grab it uh, when I need to debug stuff. All right, so what first we need to do is we uh, get an input and it's two decks. So let's first split our input by um, two new lines. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, which is going to grab this empty line as well. And then we're going to end up with an array with two elements, uh, player one and player two. And um, and I also want to map each deck to have, uh, I want to have an array of uh, each card, uh, of cards for each deck. So I'm going to map uh, each player's uh, deck so I'm gonna say deck is gonna return uh, first I need to split the deck by uh, column new line I guess you're gonna have the column new line in the second deck as well um, let's do that uh, yeah we can do that and then we're gonna end up with and then we can split the remaining as well we can also just split by new line that's gonna do it as well I think that's cleaner so let's say const player deck and we're gonna say oh we have deck twice so let's rename this to cards on on parsed cards cards yep and we're gonna split deck with uh, new lines and I'm going to use array this structure in here so what this does is says okay you have a string which is deck split it by new lines you're going to get an array and with this array this structure I'm basically saying uh, assign the first element in that array to to the sorry for that what is uh to the player uh, variable and everything else assign it to the unparse cards variable. So the first element in that array is gonna be this one. We assign that to the player variable and everything else uh, is gonna be to the unparse cards variable. And uh, that's kind of like actually what we want. So let me rename the, the, this to cards. And what I wanna return is I wanna return cards pretty much. Because I don't care about the player, I know for a fact that in the first uh, element is going to be the first player and the second element of that array is going to be the second player. So that's fine. Um, I could also just... Um, uh, let me think. I could also do this in a one-liner. What, what are we going to rename this? Let's first rename this into... Uh, Dex. Uh, that's good. And I can do this in a one liner by saying Dex split, return Dex split, and then return Dex split. No, I can do it with a one liner, but I'll just uh, stick, uh, keep it like this. It's re more readable. And because we're not using that variable, you can simply remove it. But do leave the comma because then, then JavaScript knows that, okay, we can discard the first variable, uh, first element of that array, and then the remaining elements, we put them into cards. All right, so we have our decks here. Uh, and then we, I think we're done with our parsing now. We have something we can work with. Let's, uh, let's see what, how we're gonna approach today's puzzle. So we kinda need to play a game until we find that one of the, uh, until either one of the players has uh, an empty deck so that for me, it sounds like a while loop uh, with a condition until like the player's deck is empty. So while uh, I can say while mm, uh, 
I can have a variable here. I'm going to uh, say let Probably I'm going to have two variables, player1 and player2, kind of like this. And that's going to be dex, uh, that's going to be dex. And then while player1 has length, uh, or I mean has cards, or player2 has cards, then play the game. So what we're doing here, we have uh, the dex is an array of two elements. We did structure that array into two variables, player one and player two. Uh, and then while uh, either of the players have cards, wait, both players have cards. While both players have cards, play the game. So this loop is going to continue until uh, the first player has no car more cards left. Then we're going to exit. Hi, Simon. Nice to see you here. Editor theme. Yeah, thanks for uh, mentioning that. Uh, what editor theme am I using? It's something called with bear, bear the theme, bear the theme. Yeah, it's fairly new. Because uh, uh, last time you were mentioning the contrast was not that good because I'm using a light theme and it's a bit tough to get a good contrast in syntax highlighting with a light theme. It's easier with the dark theme. But I use light theme because it's better for my eyes and there's a bunch of research behind it. Uh, I, I used dark theme uh, five years ago or so for a brief while, but then I noticed uh, I... I I had troubles uh, looking at lights in the dark. Uh, the, the the vision was fuzzy, and I was outside, and I, I was looking at traffic lights, and and uh, I, I started wondering why that is. And I did some research, and I switched to light themes ever since, and I haven't got that problem. So uh, big fan of light themes. And bearded theme is I found it recently. Uh, looked really cool, and I thought I'd give it a try. So I'm using kind of the like yeah this theme. Uh, it has a bunch of different themes. It's kind of like a theme pack and I'm using the light version of that it also has dark versions and the solarize as well so uh, that's the theme in case you're interested uh, to, 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 to be the theme you can find it in the VS Code marketplace all right so uh, we have our player one and player two I might rename these variables a bit later uh, to make it more clear that it's, we're talking about cards um, but uh, we are talking about cards here so what do we need to do? We kind of need to keep track. We need to play a game and the game is uh, draw the top card and whoever has the highest card uh, gets those cards added to their deck at the end with their own card first and then the other player's cards second. So what we can do here is I guess uh, we can say um, Playing cards. I just said card one, and I'm gonna use shift. In this case, shift modifies an array in place, uh, which is what we want. Shift is gonna return the. I can pull up the documentation. What shift does. I don't use shift that much uh, in real life. Well, this is real life, but I work because uh, it modifies an array in place. And I try not to modify uh, objects or arrays in place because that can uh, quickly lead to bugs. So I usually assign you arrays. But in this case, it's uh, quite convenient to do it, to use it. And it uh, removes the first element from an array and returns that removed element, which we want, the card. And this method also changes the length of the array. So yeah, it changes the... Um, array in place so after you do a shift that array is gonna have that card removed from the deck so that's kind of like what we want here so we have both cards here and we are gonna say if card one is bigger than cards wait the the rules don't say what what happens if we have a draw well in this case there cannot be a draw because uh, no player has the same card as the other player let's look at our input Input. Can we spot a card that is the same as in the first deck? Wait, I'm gonna open input here. Uh, 18. Do I see 18 here? I guess not. 9, 50. Do I see 9 or 50 in the other player's deck? I guess not. So I guess uh, that's something we can assume. That the cards are never gonna be equal. Yeah. Alright. 
I'm gonna just go with that. Uh, so card one is bigger than card two, meaning that the first player won. And uh, so if the first player wins, then we need to add both cards to that player's deck. So we can use for that, we can use mm -hmm, array push is gonna add it at the end of the array. Oh, that's nice. The push method adds one or more elements to the end of an array and returns the new length of the array. So push as well adds an element to the array and modifies that array in place, which is awesome. So I can say card uh, with player one push, uh, card one. So we push the player's own card first, and then we push the um, losing player's card. And then else, which means the second player one in this case. So we do player two, push card two. So the own player's card first, and then player two, push, the loser's card, card one. Yeah, this looks good. So after one round, we should have one round of the game played. Uh, the players have lo the losing player has lost its card, and the winning player has had the winning card added to it. So this, uh, yeah, I think that's just it. That's kind of like the logic. Yeah, and uh, let me add a console log here at the end. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm already gonna write the uh, answer for the last for the first part so they're asking us to um, have once the game ends you calculate the winning player score which is uh, right which is the uh, index uh, multiplied by the element uh, and then add it to the next uh, and so forth uh, so that we can do that there is no draw do push to the correct player Thank you for mentioning that. Uh, do I have a, a bug in there? Maybe I'm going to double check. So card one, card two means player one. Oh, thank you for that. Um, yep, that was a bug. Thank you, Roy Virgin. Roy, Roy. Thank you, Roy. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, so we have, what do we call this? We can call answer part one. But we can score, uh, score it's score, all right. So winning score is gonna be equal to, we're gonna first need to know, well, let's just do it like this. Dex, reduce. We know that one deck's gonna be empty. Let's reduce this to, um, so, yeah, we're gonna instantiate reduce with a zero. Let's gonna have an accumulator here. We're gonna have a deck, and we can just say um, Oh, I'm gonna be smarter about this. I'm gonna have a filter first. I'm gonna have a deck in there and return deck if deck has cards. All right, so we only filter for the uh, you only we filter out the deck uh, which has no cards, so we only have the deck uh, that we care about here, and then we're gonna use a reduce, and we can say um, we're gonna need index as well of the current uh, no, because that's gonna be an array. Hmm, let me think. Reduce at this is not gonna be deck anymore. This is gonna be card, and then we're gonna have index of that card so we say return accumulator plus uh, card times index but index can be zero so I think it's off by one index plus one uh, I think this is uh, what we want so let's see what's going on console log answer part one winning score all right, uh, let's uh, run the program. Node day 22 index.js. All right, so it takes a long time to go through the game. Um, 
I'm gonna wait a little bit and see if I get a result within a reasonable amount of time. If I don't, then I might have made a mistake here in my while loop condition, such that it always it never it, it never exits, or we need to be uh, or this approach is just too simple and we need to be uh, smarter about this. Okay. I'm gonna quit the program. Um, let me add a breakpoint, kind of like, ooh, do, 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 or do I add a breakpoint? I wanna add a breakpoint at the end. Oh no, I'm just gonna add a breakpoint here in the loop. All right, let's um, go through the program step by step and see if everything is working as expected. So we have two decks. Uh, oh, those are numbers. Oh, those are strings. Okay. So one thing I need to do, I need to cast these to uh, numbers because we cannot, uh, you cannot compare strings. That's going to mess up your logic. So I can do that in here. Uh, 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 cards map, cards, uh, number. Oh, I can do that in a shorthand. Yep, uh, this should, um, this should do the job. Let's see. Great, our uh, cards are now numbers. Uh, let me just run the program now, see maybe that was, uh, that fixed the bug. Player one, player one, player two. Card one, card two, card two, card one. That seems good. And then we have player one has cards and player two has cards. All right, so that was on the bug. Let's, um, let's see. So we have player one and player two, 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 two. Maybe I add these variables to watch so then I can have a look at them here. Uh, kind of like this. They're a bit long, but okay. Uh, and then let's, so first card, let's add a breakpoint here. So card one is 18, card two is 32, player two wins. So we should end up with, uh, 18, 32 at the bottom of that array. Uh, or yeah, uh, 32, 18, that way around, that's good. I just noticed that player two has zero. Is that correct? Can the player two have a card of zero? No, that's weird. How did a zero end up in there? There's a zero here, which is weird. Does player one have a zero? No. Let me um, let me run the program again. Is there a zero? Yeah, there is. Twenty fifth card. Oh, I see. I forgot to remove the new line. I always do that because if you split, you're gonna during the uh, where well, you're gonna read an input and you're gonna split by new line, you're gonna end up with like a empty element. And when we parse the string to uh, a number here, it's yeah, so somehow JavaScript parses an empty string to a zero. Uh, and that's kind of like messing up with our input. So uh, I always make sure to remove that last new line. So we should get rid of the zero now. Great. And then we have 25 cards. Maybe that was the bug. Let me uh, run the program again. Okay, so the program does finish now in time. Uh, but we get a non, not a number which is usually a sign that we're kind of trying to do something like an addition or something with a number that is not a number that it's a string or something else. So that could be here. Cards, index, uh, 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 uh. I'm gonna remove my breakpoints. I think the issue is here. So we have decks. So this is in a, oh, actually we can see it. So this is an array of two elements and we filter the deck that has a length. 
that has uh, cards so we can just do length because it's going to be one or bigger so that's good and then we have that single deck and we reduce it by have let me add a breakpoint here maybe so we have accumulated at zero our card is okay so player has one here and we have our card what's our card oh wait so that's the entire deck oh for certain some reason i need to do a flat i think that will fix it yeah that fixes it so what's happening here is that we filtered out the empty uh the empty deck but we still had an array within an array so we had a the, the deck itself was an array and outside it was an array as well so i do i use flat here to uh flat the array into just one dimensional array to just have that single array of cards uh so then we can get so we get card here instead of the deck so that's uh, uh what are we doing here and i think it should work now give it a spin yes we do get a result thirty thousand two hundred uh thirty nine is that our correct answer? It's too low. So let's see what's happening in our reduce. Usually don't work with JavaScript, but Java. This is the second bug though that didn't jump out that you won't have in Java because of static typing. Uh, true, true. Static typing does uh, save you here and there. Uh, so yeah, that would have been neat. Um, we have card and index plus one. Oh, wait, I know what we're doing. Uh, our deck is uh, sorted in reverse order, so it should be. Uh, let me see. We have our deck here. Do we? I cannot output it. But our deck is in reverse order, so we need to shift the index. So index is when we start from here. This is going to be index uh, zero, and we need to. It needs to be the length of the array, so we can do. Uh, mm -mm -mm. We're going to get the array in here. So what we can do is deck. Wait, deck uh, dot length minus index uh, so we're gonna have deck length it's gonna be uh, 50 cards minus index minus zero so it's gonna be 50 okay that works all right let's run our program again we get a different number which is higher which is kind of like what they hinted us too high so this is too low and this too high we need to be somewhere in the middle in between not in the middle um let's see uh i think this logic was oh wait a second multiplication takes precedence okay this should do uh yep yeah, that's in between those two numbers i'll have to wait a minute before i can try again so i'm gonna wait a bit but this should be our correct answer a few silly mistakes here and there some bugs but uh Today's first part is far too easy. For the 22nd day in Advent of Code, this is far too easy. So what I'm expecting is that part two is gonna have a twist. Part two is gonna have a twist and it's gonna make it, um, it's gonna be considerably more difficult than the first part. That's what I'm expecting. Maybe what can I do in the meanwhile is I can try the code with the example input see if it works 306 I think that was the correct answer 306 yeah I should have done that in the first place test the code with the example input first before I uh, use the my own input all right but I think we're free to go now yes we did it part one record amount of time 30 minutes for this 22nd day Far too easy, but yeah, as we can notice, yep, 
part two is far more uh, complicated. You lost to the small crab. Oh, we lost to the crab. Damn it. Fortunately, crabs aren't very good at recursion. To defend your honor as a raft captain, <laughs> you challenge the small crab to a game of recursive combat. Okay, so we play a different game now. Recursive combat still starts by splitting the cards into two decks. You offer to play with the same starting decks as before. It's only fair, so the puzzle input doesn't change. Then the game consists of a series of rounds with a few changes. Alright, few changes, four. Before either player deals a card, if there was a previous round in this game that had exactly the same cards in the same order in the same player's decks, the game instantly ends in a win for player one. Previous rounds from other games are not considered. What? This prevents infinite games of recursive combat, which everyone agrees is a bad idea. Alright, so I think this is, we're gonna have to have a recursive function. And this rule is somehow gonna be our stop rule, I think. And we're gonna need to have an additional variable to keep track of what cards were played at what time. Um, second rule, otherwise this round's cards must be in a new configuration. The players begin the round by each drawing the top card of their deck as normal. Alright. Rule 3. If both players have at least as many cards remaining in their deck as the value of the card they just drew, the winner of the round is determined by playing a new game of recursive combat. Alright. So in here we're going to have a condition and then we're going to call our recursive function. Otherwise at least one player must not have enough cards left in their deck to recurse. Uh, the winner of the round is the player with the higher value cards. Interesting. As in regular combat, the winner of the round, even if they won round by winning a sub game, takes two cards dealt at the beginning of the round and places them on the bottom of their own deck, again so that the winner's card is above the uh, other card. Alright, so that doesn't change. Note that the winner's card might be the lower value of the two cards if they won the round due to winning a sub game. Okay, that's good uh, that they mentioned that. Uh, we wouldn't have that in this case because we're not doing the high cards. Uh, but we, uh, yeah, the lower valued cards can be uh, placed first if they won the round to winning a sub game. If collecting cards by winning the round causes a player to have all of the cards, they win and the game ends. Here's an example of a small game that will loop forever without the infinite game prevention rule. So I'm actually going to have an example input for this part because I uh, have a sense that we're going to have bugs in our program and we'll need to debug and having a smaller input is easier to debug with to kind of like go through the program. So we're going to use that. We're going to use input two here. Good. And so during a round of recursive combat, if both players have at least as many cards in their own decks as the number on the card they just dealt, uh, the winner of the round is determined by recursing into a sub-game of recursive combat. If both players have at least as many cards in their own decks as the number on the card they just dealt. So for example, if player 1 draws the 3 card and player 2 draws the 7 card, this would occur if player 1 has at least 3 cards left and player 2 has at least 7 cards left, not counting the 3 and 7 cards that were drawn. Alright, so we need to modify the array in place and then actually count that array's length. Uh, so let me read again, at least as many cards. So player 2 draws 2 and player 2 does have at least as many cards left. Player 1 draws 43. Uh, we, uh, so the, that player does not have at least that many cards and the rule is both players need to have at least that many cards to go into to recursive combat, to go into sub game. So they're not going to play sub game. To play sub game recursive combat, oh they are, oh, let me see. To play a uh, sub game recursive combat, each player creates a new deck by uh, making a copy of the next cards in their deck. Copy, bold, yep. Uh, the quantity of cards copied is equal to the number on the card they drew to trigger the subgame. 
yeah that makes sense because it's uh oh wait that does not make sense right so the number equal to the number of the cards they drew to trigger the sub game that's interesting so a player can have more cards left in their deck uh than the current cards number and the cards that we're gonna play with in a sub game is gonna be the a subset of that deck um that is equal to the length of that uh, current card's number so we could uh, discard cards here some cards could be discarded for the sub game at least um, during the sub game the game that triggered it is on hold and completely unaffected no cards are removed from players decks to form the sub game mm, let me read this again each player creates a new deck by making a copy. The quantity is uh, right. During this sub game, the game that triggered is it is on hold and completely unaffected. No cards are removed from players' decks to form the sub game. Oh, I see. All right. So yeah, that's kind of like they're kind of explaining here things that happens when you have a recursive function. Uh, so this this yeah this will all happen automatically if you use a recursive solution to solve this. But if you don't, you'll have to keep account for all of these extra things. So recursive function is definitely the, the easier approach here. For example, if player one drew the three card, their deck in the sub game would be copies of the next three cards in the deck. Okay, that makes sense. So let's look at an example, play it out. Here's a complete example of gameplay where game one is the primary game of recursive combat. Game two, game interesting that's a long game so this is what this that's silly so they're not using this input they're using a different input they're using this input uh game one round one game one player one stack player two stack i'm actually gonna use okay so they have the game here so after the game the winning player score is calculated from the cards they have in the original deck using the same rules as regular combat in the above game, the winning player score is 291. Uh, so our Andrew, uh, like our reduce function and our uh, end calculation is going to be the same, uh, but it's going to be a different game. So different players going to win, and I'm assuming we are going to win this time. I defend your honor as Raft Captain by playing the small crab in a game of recursive combat using the same two decks as before. What is the winning player score? All right. First thing I'm going to do is. Um, I'm gonna extract this into a, a function because we're gonna reuse that in a second part. Uh, calculate winning winning score and it's gonna take the winning deck. And it's gonna return All right, and then to pass in, uh, we need to still do that. So that's going to be winning deck remove that and we pass in uh the winning score is going to be calculate winning score with the winning deck all right let's run our program again and see if it uh nope it does not uh the flat one calculate winning score oh wait we're kind of using a different input here yeah, still works. Okay, so our refactoring works. We're going to use the same thing for the second part. So I'm just going to I'm going to wrap this in an immediately executing function so we don't have scope collision. This means that all the variables inside of here are going to be scoped to this function, uh, this block and not collide with all these variables inside of here, which is what we want because we're going to have a new winning deck for the second part 
and um, I don't want to rename these variables to winning deck part one and winning deck part two. Uh, so let me create an individual scope for the first part as well. Remove this at the top. There we go. And remove this up top as well. Great. And actually, this can be in a new line. It's just like this. Awesome. New line or like a single line, one liner. Great. This is kind of like what we want. And now we can um, play our game. Uh, we're going to re need reuse this because we're going to need players decks and we're going to still have a while loop that plays until one of the decks is empty but um, or not a while loop perhaps a recursive function we'll have to see uh, but here's uh, our logic that's where our logic is going to go and I'm going to use the example deck here to kind of like it's silly that they don't just paste it is it from the first game nine two six three one all right so it's the example input from the first part awesome I'll just copy that here because we're gonna use that to debug our program and then uh, we have the game played out here so I'm gonna go through the uh, game play out and uh, to see that I uh, completely understand the rules these four rules because while I was reading them I some things were not clear so I'm gonna what I usually do is I go through the example input that they show here to an example round and see that what they're doing are making sense in my head and then I can actually uh, then I know exactly what I need to code what the program is gonna look like so we have uh, two starting decks player one and player two Player 1 plays 9, player 2 plays 5, so the top cards. Uh, player 1 wins round 1 of game 1. That's correct, 9 is higher than 5. So what, has happened, what happens then? Okay, player 1 gets the cards uh, in that order, that makes sense. So round 2 is going to be 2 and 8. Player 2, uh, 8, uh, no wait, player 2 wins the round. That's correct, so player 2 gets those cards, 8 and 2. Add it to the deck. Uh, round three, uh, six and four. Player one wins round th three of game. That's correct. Player one gets the card, six and four. Uh, then we have another round, three and seven. Player two wins. Player two gets three and seven to their deck. Uh, seven and three in that case. And then round five. How many rounds do we go? Okay, so this makes sense. Until round uh, two. two so let's see, player 2 wins, player 1 wins, player 1 wins, player 2 wins, that makes sense. Okay, so we have here, player 1 draws 4, player 2 draws 3, playing a sub game to determine the winner. So we play sub game because, uh, because player 1 has at least 4 cards in their deck, which is true. And player 3 has at least 3 cards in the deck, which is also true. So, both conditions, uh, both players have at least a number of cards that they, they uh, the card they drew. Therefore, we go into a sub game. Okay, so that makes sense. Before the player deals a card, if there was a previous round, uh, no, where's the sub game rule? Here. If both players have at least as many cards remaining in their deck as the value of the card they just drew, the winner of the round is determined by playing the new game of recourse of combat. Alright, that rule is completely clear for me. So then we go into a sub game, and we go into a sub game with which cards? We go, this player has four cards, he drew four, so we get four cards, nine, eight, five, two. This player uh, drew a three, so we get three cards, but which three cards? Okay, three cards from the beginning. So we discard the last, the bottom card. Okay, that's something I need to keep in mind as well when I uh, create a new array, a copy, and feed that into the recursive function. It needs to be the first uh, X amount of cards. All right, so then we play a sub game. <clears throat> player two wins, 
player one wins, player two wins, player two wins again, player two wins again, player two wins, and then we are left without cards. Uh, so player two, uh, uh, player one, yeah, player one lost this sub game, and therefore we gave, we go back to game one. Player 2 wins round 9 of game 1. Okay, so that player wins the actual round because that player 2 won the sub game, therefore, which was kind of the, the round 9 of that game. So the player 2 wins the round. And then we go back to the, uh, to the original game. And then let me think. What happens to the cards now? So 9, 8, 5, 2, 10, 1. Oh, I see. Nine, eight, five, two, because they played both. Uh, because round nine of game one was four and three. Player two won that round through a sub game. So, even though this player had the lower card, uh, player uh, this player won the round, so he gets the four card four. And we add this to the deck in the actual order, yeah, because play, uh, card three was this owns player card, and then we add uh, the winning card at the bottom. And then we continue the game 9 10, uh, player two wins, player uh, one wins, makes sense, player two wins, and so on. And now we have another sub game. Uh, so we have a sub game with two cards, that's correct, eight and one. And then six cards, all the cards go in there. Then we play the sub game. Oh, we have another sub game in here. One card and four cards. So that's gonna be one card here and four cards. Yep, we play the other sub game. And then the sub game is won by player two, we go back. So which cards were played? Uh, before we went into that sub game, one and four. So that player gets one and four. I think. Yeah, four and one. Good. Back to the one game up in the our recursive function. And then player two wins here, player two wins here again. So back to original game. Okay, and then another sub game. Oh, so okay, so this goes on and on until eventually uh, uh, player two wins. Yep. All right, so that makes sense. Let me go. Let me read the rules again because our stop condition is here as well. Before either player deals a card, if there was a previous round in this game that had exactly the same cards in the same order. the same player's decks the game instantly ends in a win for player one. Oh, that's interesting I'm gonna read this rule in a little bit so I understand this rule that's a recursive rule otherwise this round's cards must be in a new configuration the player begin the round by each drawing the top card of their deck as normal okay that makes sense here's our uh, stop rule otherwise at least one player must not have enough cards left in their deck to recurse so the winner of the round is the player with the higher value card. Hmm, interesting. All right, so before either player deals a card, if there was a previous round in this game that had exactly the same cards in the same order in the same player's decks. So yeah, equal decks. The game instantly ends in a win for player one. For player one, that's interesting. How are we gonna keep track of the previous deck? Well, we have to do that in recurse in the function. We're gonna pass on the previous deck as an argument. Right, that's interesting. And then player one is kind of like um, in advantage here because he wins that uh, in that instance. Previous rounds from other games are not considered. This prevents infinite games of recursive combat. Interesting. Right, let's start uh, writing some code and then. Um, we will uh, see. Uh, for me, it's a little bit tough to start writing a recursive function from the get go, uh, but I might try. 
I might try it in this in this case. Um, <clears throat> play game, and we're gonna have. Player one, player two. All right, uh, so we have we have uh, both players decks. So let's first write our stop condition, which is gonna be if one of the player players won. Um, I think we first need to draw a card. Card one, <clears throat> shift. Player two, card two. Previous rounds of the current sub game, you'll have to keep a log. Oh, I see. Uh, 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 so just the current sub game? If there was a previous round in this game. All right, yeah, thanks for mentioning that. Uh, I was confused with, I thought it was the previous round of the, like the upper in the other game, but it's just the current, uh, current games. Okay. Uh, they had exactly the same cards in the same order in the same player's decks. The game instantly ends with a win for player one. All right. Okay, so I'll have to keep a log. Yeah, thanks for mentioning that. Uh, I'll uh, uh, take that into account. Um, so card one and card two. So maybe let's do that. I actually need the wall loop in here. I might have a wall loop and a recursive function. And then I'm going to keep track of both players' decks. Hmm. Maybe not. I'll figure that in a little bit. So we have. Um, Maybe add this uh, here. Hmm. Draw cards. So we kind of need the same logic as here. I thought it was an entirely different game, but this kind of like repeats. And I repeat card one is bigger than card two, then yeah. But then I'll need to have another condition that goes into the recurse. In which case, if uh, they have at least uh, both have at least two cards, so let's have that in here. If uh, card <clears throat> if player one length, if player one's deck is smaller or equal to card one let me do it the other way around if the current card of player one is bigger or equal than that player's deck and card two is uh, bigger or equal than player uh, two's deck then we have Then we have, uh, then we go into this. Um, I'm gonna think a little bit about what I do with that here. Uh, but then we go into a new game, uh, so we need to create copies. Let's copy the player's decks. Player one, player two. 
copy player one copy player that's kind of like a a way to copy two arrays in a javascript or more than two how many ever you want and then um I need to play that game with the copies uh, but I already spotted something that I need to do I need to only uh, I need to get a subset of that as uh, big as the uh, cart drone so I guess I'll do that individually um, Yeah, I'll do that individually. Copy player one. It's player one. Um, what can we use here? Slus splice. We need something that does not modify the array in place. So that one do slice returns a shallow copy. That's what we need. Uh, of a portion of array into a new array object selected from start to end and not included. That's good. We're start and end. All right, so we'll start at zero, and this is gonna be card one plus one because it's not included. So, or oh, wait a second, maybe. So let's say we have. I always, I'm always, always get bugs. When I get bugs, it's always off by one. So uh, I've been bitten by this so many times that I just make double check triple check that my uh, the plus one needs to be here or it needs to be something else so let's go into a sub game where's the sub game here so this player has this array has four elements and this is uh, index zero and we need to get them all so it's gonna be index one two and three so I think the plus one we can get rid of the plus one and then in here is going to be three cards. So we have zero, one, two, and not including three. And this is three. Okay. Yeah. So no plus one. We avoided a future bug in here. Player copy player two. So it's kind of like the same thing, but instead with card two, we use card two to determine the length. All right. So we can get rid of this. And we play a sub game with those two decks and then we're gonna get a result we're gonna get a result it's gonna go into this while loop it's gonna uh-huh and i kind of need to keep track of who won the game let me see or i can just return the the race i can just turn their return their decks i mean <clears throat> I can return their decks and then in here I'm gonna have uh, mm -mm. what I can do I can do a filter on this filter decks this is gonna return decks and I can say decks uh, <clears throat> uh, wait deck it's gonna be singular uh, deck dot length and this is gonna be the winning deck but now i kind of lost track of who which player won there now so i need to know which player won so that i can like uh, 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 uh. yeah so i don't care about the deck at all actually i just care about which player won yeah so maybe i can return what do I return? I can return an object, player one, player two, and then have a boolean, true or false, which player one. Can you reuse that? Let me see what's best here. Or, or I just return the decks. And I don't do a filter. And I just say if dex uh, player I can do player one deck no results sub game okay Let, let's uh, variable naming very important 
We have player one, player two. Those are the decks. Uh, these are not the best variable names here. Uh, but you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna rename this to deck one and deck two. And I'm gonna rename this as well to deck one and this deck two. All right, and then we have uh, that's good, and that's gonna be uh, instead of copy deck one, I can just say uh, deck one sub game. Sub game deck one better. And I'm gonna say the same thing here. Sub game deck two. Alright, and this is gonna be this is gonna be um result sub game deck one and result sub game deck two all right so if result sub game deck one that means the first player won uh, length in which case uh, pop, pop, pop. we kind of have the same logic here I might refactor to this later but I'm just gonna copy it now for now Uh, no, what I can do is do, 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 do. I can it's gonna go into recursive game and, and then all right what I can do so this is gonna go into recursive game and then here if card one is bigger than card two or let me declare this up top. All right, and then we have, so if card one is uh, bigger than card two or result sub game deck one has length, that also means player 1-1 one, one, uh, in the sub game. Otherwise, we can assume player 2-1. So we don't even need the second one. Yeah. This is what I'm thinking of. And then return uh, deck 1 and deck 2. So uh, now for keeping track of our logs, this is going to go into a sub game, it's going to play the game here. Uh, maybe I just... I can call play gaming here. That's gonna play the game. All right. And then uh, let me see. It does not because you're starting with zero. Yeah. I think you're refer uh, referring here to, uh, to the plus one, whether I had to use the plus one or not. Right, yeah, start with zero. So, uh, 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 so we have this in place. Uh, there's something else I need to do. Is, so if this goes into a sub game, it's gonna use a new deck here. 
and it's gonna play that deck it's gonna modify that deck in place all right uh, as far uh, this can go so we found out in the from the puzzle description that this can go into an infinite loop if the decks don't change for some reason so let's see we need to keep track of the rounds that we played in a current game before either player deals a card so before we do any any of this kind of like this here before we do that if there was a previous round in this game that had exactly the same cards in the same order in the same player's decks the game instantly ends in a win for player one previous rounds from other games are not considered all right so Mm, that's interesting so you um, we have our deck in here deck one and ones and two this players are gonna sh uh, take a card and then but that's you know what's weird is that um, is that for this to happen for this to happen there needs to be a draw of some kind because how how are you gonna end up with the same cards as you had in the previous round? Because there's always a winner, right? So the there's gonna be different cards. But maybe no, they have different cards. That's weird. But I can I can keep track of and I kind of have um. I mean, I can create two variables here. Uh, previous. Deck one and previous deck two, and then the game is gonna go on until either one of the two players, uh, otherwise, the game instantly ends with a win for player one. That's interesting. And I guess that can only happen for sub games or for the main game as well. So, hmm, this could be, uh, uh, yeah, we could end up with a winner uh, that has, yeah, a sub game can end, but not necessarily the loser of a sub game does not necessarily need to have an empty deck. The loser can also have cards in uh, his deck because we can end the game with this condition. So I kind of need to refactor this a little bit. To the the actual function needs to return who won the game. It needs to return who won the game. Uh, or not necessarily who won the game but uh or is it yeah for the outer uh for the for this one i just need to get that the winner's deck because that's what i care about but for uh in this instance i need to get the actual player because then i need to know i need to know here who which cards i will i give to which player I guess this can return a digit. I can return a one for player one and a two for player two. That makes sense. Yeah, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say um, return deck one length, return one, otherwise return two. And then we're gonna have here we're gonna have a result which is gonna be the winning player winning player let winning player and we're gonna say if uh, player one won or if player one won so if winning player is equal to one then we have this otherwise we winning uh, player two won so that kind of like make makes sense now and then here at the end we're gonna play the game and we're gonna have winning player 
and then we're gonna say winning deck well yeah we don't need to do that anymore we can just say uh, winning deck is the deck of that player all right that makes sense okay so back to our uh, tracking of uh, keeping track of the decks we played. So I have previous deck one and previous deck two. Uh, and in the first instance, it's gonna be empty. But in a... Let me read the rule again. Before either player deals a card, if there was a previous round in this game, a previous round, so not exactly, oh, I see. Oh, I get it now, right. So it's not exactly the previous round, but a previous round. So I need to keep track of all the rounds. And then if we uh, get into a game state when we reach the exact game state as one of the previous rounds, then we know we, we uh, ended up in a recursive, um, uh, infinite loop because the game is gonna repeat itself right now I understand it that makes more sense now so I need to keep track of uh, yeah mm, I guess I'm gonna yeah I'm, go I'm gonna rename this to um, previous decks previous rounds or just gonna say rounds um, rounds deck one should be player one but I'll stick to deck one uh, and it's gonna be an array and rounds deck two is gonna be an array as well all right so then what we do so before the player draws any cards we need to figure out if the current deck exists in either of the two so let's see that uh, let's do that const uh, found repeating deck one and we're gonna say uh, rounds deck one filter Uh, round hmm. maybe rename this to previous previous rounds deck one yeah I'm a little bit picky about variable naming but that prevents bugs in the future because if Variable names are vague and I need to figure out what the program does and what it exactly, how it works. Uh, I need to have everything working for me, helping me out. And an ambiguous variable names are not particularly helpful in figuring out what things do because what does a variable hold? Previous round deck one. Um, previous round deck one it needs to be exactly equal as the current deck so and that's going to be an array of cards of digits so all the numbers inside one needs to be equal to uh, side two hmm. so, uh, let me see maybe a nested loop in here instead of filter i'm gonna do sum this is gonna return true if at least one uh element returns true in this callback and then I'm gonna do and here I'm gonna use every so I'm gonna use previous round deck one every so for every card and then that index needs to match uh, card is equal to deck one at that index yeah
I think this is kind of like the logic that needs to happen here. Wait, so let me just get this out. So for every, uh, we iterate through previous rounds and for each round, for every card in that round, in that previous round, uh, get the card of the current deck at that index. If it equals true, continue. And, and if all of them equal true, then we found a matching deck. And uh, therefore, this is gonna return true. All right, so we do the same thing here. Same thing here for the second deck. Found repeating deck two. Previous round deck two. Previous round deck. Previous round deck two. And cards, we can leave it that. And here deck two. All right. And then what we can do uh, then do is before we draw any cards in here, before uh, then we can say if we find a found repeating deck one and um, found repeating deck two, then we need to return player one has one, so we uh, return one. Otherwise, play the game. Um, is that gonna do the job? Is that gonna do the trick? Hopefully. Did I uh, need to do anything else? So we have this rule. Otherwise, this round's cards must be in a new configuration. The deck, the player begins the round by each drawing the top card of their deck as normal. All right, so that's what we do. If both players have at least as many cards remaining in their deck as the value of the card they just drew, so at least they should do that. This should take care of that. Uh, and otherwise the players must not have enough cards. All right, this looks good. Let's uh, play a game. Let's or play a game, run the program with our example input. And we get a player one is not defined, uh, line 80. Oh, of course, deck one and deck two. Deck one, deck two. Try again, another error. Winning deck is not defined, line 81. Because this is uh, has to be decks. All right, let's run again. Another error. Um, can I read probably reduce of undefined? Uh, which line? 11? Oh, yeah. So, these are these are an arrays passed by reference. And this part, uh, so in our first part, we modified that array. And then, this is going to be the exact same array as this one. So, uh, we do not want that. We Let's make copies. Uh, let's make copies by saying... So that we don't, uh, so that our first part program does not mess with the uh, decks that we um, use in a second part. Because here we need to start with a fresh set of decks. And this is not the cleanest way to do that, but uh, I'm gonna refactor this later. Okay, this should have gotten rid of the bug. Uh, no, still not. Interesting. Uh, line 11. Winning deck, reduce. Oh, but wait, recall, when are we calling this slide 81? Okay, so that might not, not have been the bug. Oh, I see, because I'm uh, returning one or two, but it needs to be uh, uh, an index, so I need to subtract one. All right, so we get 93. You get 93. Is that the correct answer? 
Nope, it needs to be 291. Okay, so our program is working, but there's a bug somewhere inside. And we need to figure out what that bug is. Let me first see, uh, play, play game, deck one, deck two. We get the winning player, either one or two, and then we get that player's deck. Let's see what we end up with. Uh, nope, we don't need to watch. What is deck one? Is nine, deck two. All right, so the destruction here is not exactly. So this is Dex, and then that's an array. Destructor that array. Now that seems right, though. That seems right because we still get the correct answer for the first part. So I don't think that this structuring is where our bug lies. Oh no, we don't, 306. Okay, so our bug is here somewhere. Um, what if I just use dex? Maybe it's not modifying it. I think it is. I just need to copy. Maybe it is. Let's uh, see. Yeah, it is modifying. We get 306, which is the correct answer for the first part. But um, because we get the same answer for the second part, it's kind of like uh, sounds to me that we need to use copy. So let's just be, let's just, um, Getting a little bit confused with the radius structure, so I'm just gonna do it like this. I could also just use, I know there's a copy method, isn't there? Copy within. No, that's not what I need. Yeah, there's several ways to copy an array in JavaScript. This one way, there's different ways as well. Um, but uh, I don't copy arrays that often. Um, so I don't really have a preference of what, which way to use and what's more readable. But um, Let's uh, give it another spin now. That's weird, still not using copies. Wait, if I just, <clears throat> no. What is, wait, let me just add a debugger breakpoint here and see that, so dex is an element of two arrays. So I grab the first array and I copy it. I spread it out into a new array and then I assign that. So this should be copies. Fairly sure of that. Let's go on. So player one has that, player two has that. And the decks should be should still be the original decks. Let's add a breakpoint here. And uh, alright, so our decks are yeah, our decks are still the same, unmodified. So before we before we actually play the game. Um, deck one, deck two. Okay, so that's not a problem. But what is weird though, what is weird is that, oh, I see. It's here. This is tapping into the original array. Yeah, okay, got it. Uh, here I'm assuming the actual original array uh, decks are modified, so I need to change that. Um, winning deck is gonna be player one, player 
player two. Filter out, flat it out. Okay, that should do it. Yep, 306 works well. And um, and here we tap into the original deck, which again we don't. Uh, winning player. So then const winning deck if winning player is oh no winning deck is just no winning player is equal one then the winning deck is player uh, deck one otherwise it's gonna be deck two and we're gonna use winning deck here Okay. Winning player equals one. Deck one. And then we have deck one here. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, what's weird is that we get the same uh, answer as the first part. We're playing with input two. Example input. Uh, 306. And what is it? Uh, the answer in the second part? 291. So we need to get 291 for the answer for the second part. Um, let me see. I might. This might be all right. It's might. We might have to go in, inside the uh, inside here. Let me see if card one is bigger and equal to deck one length. You know what I'm not doing here? I'm not, uh, I mean, we are going through the array, but we're not actually keeping track of the array. So let's do that. Uh, let me rephrase that in a clear way. We uh, use the previous rounds to kind of like check if you find a repeating round, but we don't store anything after the game, uh, an iteration of the game. So after here, right in here, we're gonna have to store a copy in our logs to check for. So we're gonna do previous rounds, deck one, push. Uh, it's gonna push. An array it's gonna be copy of deck one and do the same for deck two that's what we need to do we get a different number now we get eight which is promising which is promising so after every round we so we okay we play we sh draw cards we play that round and after the round we store the result of that round in our logs and we use copies okay this makes sense uh, let's see what else uh, we need to do here. I think we're slicing right. Sub game deck one. We pass that in here. Winning. Oh, that's weird. I have, yeah, winning player. I had a typo there. Super weird that JavaScript didn't yell. JavaScript should have yelled. Maybe I should use use strict here up top. mode yeah 
JavaScript should have definitely yelled there. So I'm trying. I was trying. I was assigning to a variable that doesn't exist. Winning player. Uh, oh, Inesa, thank you for following. Appreciate it. Nice to see you here. Uh, yeah, how are you doing? I think. Uh, what were you working on these days? I think last time you had a question about something related to React, was it? Uh, yeah, what are you up to do these days? So winning player uh, 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 is equal to one. Then card one, card two, winning player. So here, let me add some comments so I know what's going on. Uh, player, I'm gonna do that inside here. Nope, like this. Uh, player one, one. Otherwise, player two, one. We know that for a fact. Player two, one. And player one, one, if uh, player one's card is bigger than player two's card, or the winning player from the sub game is uh, one, which we return here. All right. Uh, and here, keep. Uh, log of previous rounds rounds uh, decks all right so that's what we're doing there here uh, what we're doing here is um, If um, this is just a sub game part, but what we're doing there is if players, uh, if the drawn cards, if drawn cards of, if drawn cards, um, if player both, if both players decks are at least as long as their drawn cards we enter a sub game all right which is what this does card one is bigger than or equal uh, that might be our bug what is the rule here? Uh, if both players have at least as many cards remaining in their deck as the value of the card they just drew. No, so this needs to be smaller than. Let me let me think this. If card one is smaller than yeah, so. If card one, so if we go in here, this sub game, for example, player one drew four, player two drew three. Player one has four cards. So four equals smaller or equals than the length, which is true. Three is smaller than equal. The length is also true. Yeah, because that's four. All right, so we fix the bug. Uh, that was definitely one bug, but we, it didn't make any change to our answer, weirdly enough. Um, here we draw cards. This returns a copy, which is what we need. We use the copy of that array uh, to play the sub game. We get the winning player, and then we push deck one, deck two, card one, card two, card two, card one. So that makes sense. What happens here? Here is that uh, what we're doing here is uh, we're trying to avoid a recursive loop, an infinite recursive loop. So, which is kind of like this rule here. 
before either player deals a card, if there was a previous round in this game that had exactly the same cards in the same order in the same player's decks, the game instantly ends in a win for player 1. Return 1. Yeah. Previous rounds from other games are not considered. So, um, if we have a repeating uh, set of decks for both players from a. Oh, wait a second. Something else that I need to take into account of, which I'm not doing. Let me see. The previous round, exactly the same card. Oh, I see. So, with uh, something that I just figured out is we can find a repeating deck for player one and for player two, but they could be from different rounds. In which case, uh, we still need to go on and keep playing the game. The, the only condition when player one wins if the decks for both players repeat but in the same round which we're kind of not doing here because we're just looking for all the rounds if, if we find a um, a uh, a deck and we do the same thing so we kind of need to keep to know which round hmm, which round that deck was so maybe and there could be more rounds too so what I'm going to do here instead is I'm going to use filter. I'm going to filter out the rounds. Uh, 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 um. Maybe not filter. Well, I could use filter, but I need to store the index of that round. Okay. I'm thinking whether arrays are the best data structure uh, to do that for this. In this case, or maybe I need to change my logic. I can go, I can go. Uh, uh, uh. I'm going to start a new. What if I, no, I'm not going to start a new. Uh, what if I go through? that deck I'm just gonna copy some stuff so I go through that deck and I do a, I'm gonna use here const found repeating round I'm gonna go through the first deck and I'm gonna use uh, some which is going to return as soon as one um, the first element or yeah the first callback condition returns true and then inside there I'm gonna go through I need to assert that con is found repeating deck one and that's gonna be this and I need to copy this for the second deck as well found repeating deck 2 and it's gonna be previous round deck 1 it needs to be previous round deck 2 at the current index that we're checking And we're gonna have nested indexes in here, which is not nice. So let me rename this to uh, index card. Next card. And here needs to be deck two. Right. So what we're doing here is, let me make this a little bit bigger and explain. Mm, maybe I put this in a new line. Yeah, so we can see. Okay, so what I'm doing here 
is I'm going through I'm going through a uh, a log of the uh, previous rounds for the first deck and as I go through that log I uh, check whether um, so that log that array contains an element of rounds right so uh, after several iterations I'm gonna have several rounds played in here and what I do is I uh, for each round I check if that current round if the deck if the first deck from that round matches the current deck which is here found repeating deck one and also if the deck from that round from the sec the the second deck from that round which is this because we're using the index we know at which round we are at so this is index for the round so we tap in we use that index to tap into the logs of the second deck so we get the deck for that for the second player at that round and then we check whether it matches our current uh, the current decks uh, for play the current deck for player two and then we also have a, f a repeating uh, we found a repeating deck for the player two and, and because we have a sum here we need to return true uh, return true if found repeating deck one and found repeating deck two it's going to turn true so in this case we have a repeating round we can get rid of all of this and then we can say if we found the repeating round then player one wins that's kind of like what's happening here let me put this here all right let's uh, see what the program does now still same answer so that wasn't a bug but I think this uh, definitely uh, improves things. Okay, I think I'll just have to um, use the debugger. I have to use the debugger and go through the game and play it. So we have input two. All right, let's, uh, where are we gonna add breakpoints? We're gonna add breakpoints definitely before we go into a, uh, a sub game. So here and here and then uh, let's also add a breakpoint here so we know which player won uh, the logs the logs are fine let's also add a breakpoint in here so we know which player won that sub game and um, what else do we care for I guess also here so we know we found a repeating round okay uh, let's play the game um, so we have deck one and deck two okay those are good we have empty logs all good found repeating round is false because our logs are empty so we're gonna go to here and then each player draw a card nine and five correct um, are we gonna go into sub game five? No, we shouldn't go into a sub game, which is correct. Card one is bigger than card two, that's true. So player one wins this round. We can kind of like follow the game here. So nine and five, player one wins round one. So then we go to the next iteration. And now we should have, our deck should have, deck of player one should be this and deck of player two should be that. Let's see. Two six three one nine five. Two six three one nine five. That's correct. Eight four seven ten. Eight four seven ten. Good. All right. A found repeating round. True. All right. So here's a bug, I guess. That shouldn't be true. That should be false. So previous rounds. We store the previous rounds correctly. Uh, we do not. Mm. We should have stored the initial round as well. We should have stored the initial round too. Let me see how we can best do that. Because if I store the initial round here already, I'm gonna find true here. So. Mm -hmm. 
what if what if instead of checking here before they draw cards i check after they draw cards but no that's not what the puzzle said the puzzle said that i think this is fine okay so we have this is the previous round and then well yeah then it's gonna say true of course uh, 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 uh. previous round so we need to move this code somewhere we can move it at the end We could move it at the end. In which case here, so we have a repeating round. Yeah, we could move this at the end. I think that would make sense. If we put this up here, we check that if we find a previous round here after the first round has played and then we don't find it so then we push that round in there this might do the trick let's run the program mm, doesn't but let's uh, debug let's see what happens now so we're gonna have to do, do, do. Our breakpoint still there. We're gonna add a breakpoint in here. Right. Let's run the program again. See if things happen as they should. Okay. So first uh, game we have. Let me add some variables to watch. And then. And we got what gonna watch the first text as well, but it's fine. We can do it out. Let's remove this. It's much easier to keep track of variables here. Okay, so we have nine and five, which is what we're playing with. We don't go into a sub game, player uh, one wins. Therefore, the cards for the second player should be, let's add these as well, add to watch. Uh, therefore, we go into here, oh, we found repeating false, that's good. And then we go into second round. So second round, we have um, 63195, but then we already drew some cards, so that's, um, uh, 63195 and we drew two and here we should have four seven ten and we drew eight two and eight that's good uh, here what should be the result player two wins okay so we don't have a sub game player two wins found repeating round should be false and then we should have let's push oh, yeah. we should have here we should have our Previous deck pushed, which is correct. So our logs. Let's look at our logs. Uh, we have uh, two six three one and five and six three one and five. That's interesting. Um, two six three one nine five and six three one nine five. All right. Yep. Yeah, that's correct. And uh, this one is 84710, which is players to deck 84710 and 47182. 47182. Okay, so the logs look good. Let's continue. Uh, player, so player six plays with four and player one plays with. Player one plays with six, player two plays with four, player one wins. Repeating round false. So deck of player one is one nine six. Yep, there we are. And player one drew th three, player two drew seven. 
player 2's deck is also correct. Player 2 wins this round. We don't have a sub game. Still good. Found the pinning ground false. Continue. Alright, so the deck of player 2 should be 9, 5, 6, 4. Uh, the deck of player 2, player 1, I mean, player 2, 8, 2, 7, 3. And they, they're playing with 1 and 10. Alright, let's continue. No sub game. Uh, next round, 5, 6, 4. And 2, 7, 3, 10, 1. They're playing with 9 and 8. Player 1 wins. Keep going. They're playing with 5 and 2, and their decks are 6, 4, 9, 8, and 7, 3, 10, 1. All looking good so far. We're gonna go into a sub game soon. Let's go to the next. Let's go to the next round. They're playing with 6 and 7, and their decks are 4, 9, 8, 5, 2, and 3, 10, 11. Uh, 1, I mean, 3, 10, 1. Let's go to the next round. Found repeating round is still false. That's good. And here we're gonna go into sub game. So 4, 3, 9, 8, 5, 2, 10, 1, 7, 6. Alright, so they're going they're going to a sub game. Let's verify that they're going uh, into the sub game with the correct deck. They're going to play with 9, 8, 5, 2, and 10, 1, 7. Uh, 9, 8, 5, 2, 10, 1, 7, round one of game of the sub game. That looks good. So we're passing that in into the sub game. So now we're inside the sub game. So they're playing with 9 and 10. And their decks are 8, 5, 2 and 1, 7. And then we go to uh, the next round. No sub game. Uh, player 2 wins. No repeating round. Alright. So they're playing now with 8 and 1. And their decks are 5, 2 and 7, 10, 9. 5, 2, 7, 10, 9. Looks good. Next round. Playing with 5, 7. Decks are 2, 8, 1, 10, 9. 2, 8, 1, 10, 9. Good. Next round. They're playing with uh, 2, 10. 2 and 10. And their decks are 8, 1, 9, 7, 5. 8, 1, 9, 7, 5. Looks good. Next round. They're playing with 8 and 9. And the decks are 1 and 7, 5, 10, 2, 1, 7, 5. Yeah, 7, 5, 10, 2. All right, player 2 wins. Okay, so now we have, we are, we're in the last round of our sub game. Player 1 is playing with 1, player 2 is playing with 7, and players uh, 1 has no cards left. Player 2 has 5, 10, 2, 9, and 8 left, which is good. So now we should uh, reach a winner of this sub game. So we should go in here. Yep. And here we're gonna return deck one has no length. Deck one length is zero, so that's false. Play one has no cards, therefore we return true. Let me add this uh, there. And we say return value true, two. So player two wins, that's correct. Uh, let me remove and let it go. So now we're. Uh, let me see. We're back to our original game and now player one plays with nine. All right, so we have our bug. We have our bug. So here we return two. And then here we return the winning player was two. Oh, I see what's going on. And then we... So player 2 won. Oh, wait. Yeah, I see what's going on. Yeah, we uh, need to do something else. Let me just say winning player is equal to 1. I'm just going to copy whatever happens here. That's one too much. So what's happening is that even though player two won the sub game, 
we still did a comparison of the cards in which case i think let me see before we entered the sub game player one had a higher card so we said that player one won but it should have been player two because the player two won the sub game so what we need to do here instead is i just copy the code for uh for whatever happens when a player wins and I put it inside here uh, when there's a sub game and then this happens there and then else else we're not playing a sub game but we are just doing um, uh, we are doing whatever happens here but I'm gonna put this to the top else we did not not play a sub game and uh, we uh, yeah, so this I can. Cons 20 player can get rid of this as well. And then we just play the game. So this is kind of like what uh, should fix our bug. Yep, 291. This is the correct answer for the example input. Um, and. Um, I'm going to remove all the breakpoints and before I give it a spin for our own input I'm just going to check uh, quickly if I can refactor this because here's a re repeating code and I'll, I wonder whether I can uh, refactor this in a way that I can only I only have to do this once but I don't mess up with the um, with that. Well, what I can do is I can have winning player. I can say, uh, and then do this. And then outside I can do, if there's a winning player, which means we play the sub game. If there's a winning player, uh, and I guess sub game, if there was a sub game, sub game always takes precedence over the actual game. So I can say if winning player equals one or card one is bigger than card two, in which case player one won the current game, then we can have this um, player one uh, one. And then else, if, so, player one, and then else we can have this, I guess, because, because if we have, if we play a sub game, there's going to be a winning player. It's going to be defined that variable is going to be defined it's going to be either one or two if it's a one player one one if it's a two then it's false and then we check whether uh the current player actually then we did if oh, let me see no this can be two Uh, in which case, yeah, player one. Okay, so this is this is not correct either, because winning player can be one. You know what I can do? If winning player is one, or card one. If there's a, I can do if winning player is defined. In that case, we play the sub game and winning players too. Yeah, I think this is because here we say if we play this a sub game and if the winner of the sub game is player one, then give the cards to player one. Or if player one's card is bigger than 
uh, player 2's card, then also give the cards to player 2. So in case uh, we did play a sub game, no this is still not gonna fix it. If you play a sub game, this needs to be uh, if a winning player and winning player 1. This is so confusing. So I just try to... Mm, yeah, trying to see how I can refactor this. Ideally, I want to get rid of this duplication. And what needs to happen is I played a sub game in here. So in case that I play a sub game, then we have either player one or player two as the winner. In case we don't play a sub game, we need to check their cards. So if winning, if there, if we play the sub game and the winner of sub game is player one, then do that. Otherwise. Uh, or if there's no sub game and kind of like this and uh, card one is bigger than two otherwise if we go in here then we play the sub game and the winner of the sub game was player two in which case this was false or um, we didn't or, or, or we didn't play a sub game. Okay, I think this should do it. Uh, maximum call stack, of course, because I need to comment this out. All right, yeah, that does it. All right. Yep, okay, so this is a little bit tricky to understand, this conditional, but it basically says that if we play, uh, the, the only case where player one won is if we played a sub game and that player was the winner of that sub game. Or if we didn't play a sub game and player one's card is bigger than player's two cards. Otherwise, player two won because we either played a sub game and the player, uh, the winning uh, player of the sub game was two. Uh, or players two card is bigger than players one card. Yep. And um, okay, so that works. Let's uh, give this uh, program a run for our own input. And it's gonna take a little bit to calculate. I hope not too long. I hope not too long. Otherwise, we're gonna have to. Yeah doesn't take too long 14 seconds that's all right submit yes we solved part two and therefore we also solved day 22 awesome we got the two stars for today yay that's cool all right so um let me see if i want to do some more refactor i think we're fine i think i'm pretty happy with what I have here that's all right yeah okay I'm gonna round this uh, up then and just gonna push uh, I'm gonna commit the solution and push it to the repository let's remove the example input all right uh, git and all git status git commit uh, day 22 soft yay party let's add an emoji there no emojis why, why no emoji not that emoji here oh weird okay something in my terminal uh okay then all right let's push to our main branch or emote it should appear here 
All right, it's in here. So if you guys want to have a look, uh, I'm going to paste the link to the repository in the chat. Uh, do check it out. And um, if you're watching this later on YouTube, uh, the link to the repository is going to be in the description below. And um, I think that's it for day 22. We did it in just over two hours. Not too bad for day 22 of Advent of Code. Uh, it was relatively easy today, but I should not jinx it because tomorrow might be a killer. So happy uh, with what we got. It was a nice puzzle today as well. And uh, I hope to see you tomorrow, same time, um, 10 a.m. Central European time. We're gonna continue with day 23 and it's gonna be three more days for Advent of Code for this year. So tune in tomorrow, I hope to see you then. And if you're watching this later on YouTube, just click on the next video and then you're gonna see the 23rd day uh, recording. All right, thank you very much for sticking around. Thank you folks in the chat and thank you Roy for pointing out some things, uh, uh, some bugs for me. And I hope to see you tomorrow. Bye bye.